This is the ICM 515. Now this sort of goes along with our little ICM series here about a lot of the relays and protection devices that I use you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. This is sort of a new one to me. Um, what I was thinking about is that in this world we live in now where there's a lot of DC inverters, there's circuit boards all over everything, air handlers, condensers, heat pumps, no matter what you got, gas furnaces, there seems to be at least one circuit board in everything. And as time goes by, they become more complicated and more expensive. So what the ICM 515 is, is sort of a surge protector. It uh, absorbs some of the surge or some of the <clears throat> amperage and electricity from a surge and routes it into the ground bus. So your equipment is not damaged and your circuit boards aren't fried. And what we're going to do in this video is sort of go over how that works and how we install one and where we install one. ICM has two different locations you can install this device. Uh, the first is at the disconnect. The second is on the main electrical panel. It recommends you do it at the disconnect and that's how we're going to do it too. And you can see the little picture over here. It has a little device on the side routed through a knockout and the wiring goes into the L1 and L2 load side and then over to the ground bus. We have our disconnect here. See it's a fuse disconnect that has taken the fuses out and you have your line and load side wires. Line on the outside, load on the inside. And what we would do is we take our ICM device, see that's where it goes into the knockout. You would knock out your knockout there on the side, put it through, put the ring on it just like you would a whip, and route your L1 and L2 to your load side right here. And of course you can see your black wires, L1 and L2. And then your green ground would go to the ground bus right there. That's how you wire it up. It's pretty simple to wire up. Uh, you can do the same thing in the main electrical panel. It shows you here. You just find the nearest breaker, double pole breaker, and hook it up there and then send it to the ground bus. But it recommends you do it at the disconnect. So I guess your AC gets the benefit of the device. This is a rough little install here of the device. It normally would be mounted into the side, but since uh, I'm not going to knock a hole in a brand new disconnect before I actually need to, let's have it sitting here. Let me see your L1 and L2 on the load side wires. Your AC whip will be coming in, let's say, through the bottom and mounting in that same location. You just tighten them together. And then your ground wire would be right here on the ground bus. And that's pretty much it. And for something that could potentially save a circuit board that costs hundreds of dollars, this thing's very inexpensive. And you may never need it, but I, I think it's well worth it, especially in this age where the efficiencies are higher and the circuit boards that are in these units are getting larger, more complicated, and a lot more expensive. Uh, for example, if you have your AVPTC air handler, or let's say some of your communicating equipment with your large Emerson boards on, inside of it, I mean, it's well worth it to save that board, especially if it's out of warranty. Um, I know the warranties are long now, but if in the 11th year this thing saves that board, it's going to save you a lot of money. Or even a variable speed motor module, something like that. So for the price, it's well worth it, that is for sure.